This video is for entertainment purposes only and is not financial advice. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video I'll be showing you how you can calculate the intrinsic value of dividend paying stocks. Using my calculator you can find a link to that in the video description down below. But basically this calculator will help you figure out or give you a rough idea on the intrinsic value of dividend paying companies. Now I know if you're new to investing, usually finding out how to value companies is usually the hardest part because it's very easy to understand what the company does, how the management team is running the business, and also whether the company has a moat. But it's usually the valuation part that is quite hard for beginners. So hopefully with this calculator, it'll point you to the right direction. And I'll also be going through an example using Hallenstein's Glassens, a retail company listed on the NZX that pays a relatively high dividend. I'll be going through that as an example to calculate its intrinsic value so that you can learn how to use this calculator yourself. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. So here we are, here is the front page of the calculator. On this front page, we have workings to a few different numbers. So the first number that we need to calculate is free cash flow. Now free cash flow is basically an indicator of how much cash the business has to either one, return to shareholders through a dividend or two, reinvest into the business. And actually a third one is to pay down debt. So there's three uses of free cash flow and free cash flow usually is an indicator of the company's ability to pay out dividends. So if a company has high and growing free cash flows, then chances are they'll be able to pay that out as a dividend. So the first type of calculator that we'll be using is the free cash flow calculator and that is titled FCF. So FCF stands for free cash flow and this is valuing the business based on the dividends that it will pay based on its free cash flow. So basically, this is the more complicated version of the dividend calculator. There's also another tab over here which is simplified. Basically, this simplified version doesn't use free cash flow to determine the amount of dividends that a company is able to pay. Rather, we're just using the previous year's dividend that the company has paid out and assigning it with a growth rate that we kind of expect the company to grow at going forward. So now let's take a look at the free cash flow model first. So first of all, we need to update the numbers that are highlighted in blue from an external source. So you can find lots of the company information from the company's website or the NZX website or for US stocks, you can look at Yahoo Finance. So I have all the numbers in the workings tab over here. So first of all, I've got the free cash flow numbers for Helen Stein's over here from the REAP app. So if it's a New Zealand company, the REAP app has a really handy tool where it shows you all the free cash flow numbers. And you can see that in 2020, I did make some adjustments to the free cash flow number because of timing differences. So after adjusting for the timing differences, it is actually more in line with what it's historically done. In terms of the share outstanding, I basically got this from the NZX website. So you can find that number from the NZX website if you go down into the fundamentals box and you look in securities issued, that gives us 59.6 million. So this, all the numbers here are in million and current share price is $7.38. In terms of earnings per share, you can also get that over here on EPS, so that's 46.6. Now I do have a more precise number because I did go into the annual report. So you can do that if you want more precise numbers. In terms of dividends per share, what I did was I went into the dividends page and you can calculate that by taking the uh, final dividend plus the interim dividend. So basically it's 24 cents per share plus 15 cents per share to give us 39 cents per share. And the payout ratio is basically the proportion of earnings that they've paid out in dividends. So the payout ratio is calculated by taking the dividends per share divided by the earnings per share. So imputation over here basically means the imputation credits or in Australia, it might be known as franking credits. So a company can attach an imputation credit to a dividend that they pay to shareholders if the company has already paid taxes on the profit that they make. So for example, if the company pays a tax rate of 28% in New Zealand, then when they pay out a dividend to shareholders, 
the shareholder can basically can claim back the 28% if they do have a higher tax rate than 28%. So if I have a tax rate of 33%, I can claim back 28% and I only need to pay 5% in to make up the difference between 28 and 33 percent so the imputation credit basically increases the gross dividend that you receive that's why in some cases the gross dividend is higher than the net dividend sometimes the net dividend might equal the gross dividend and that is because the company doesn't pay any taxes on their profit but when they issue out the dividends they don't have any imputation credits to it so anything that you earn will be taxed at 33 percent or whatever your individual income tax rate is. So imputation credits does affect the, the value of the company because it ultimately means less money going into your pocket if they don't have any imputation credits. So over here we can see the annual report for Hellenstein saying that the directors have declared a final dividend of 24 cents per share fully imputed. So that means it's 100% imputed. So sometimes they might say partially imputed to 50%, in which case you just change this to 50%. But in Hallenstein's case, it is 100%. And the last number that I did is calculating the average free cash flow for three years. So I took the average of uh, the free cash flow from 2018 to 2020, divided by the total shares outstanding to calculate the free cash flow per share over the past three years, just to remove any impact of timing differences. As you can see, it's a bit lumpy. It was 27 million in 2018 and 23 million in 2019 and 35 million in 2020. So it looks a bit lumpy. So I've just taken an average to forecast what it'll be going forward. So I've done all the workings now. Let's go into our free cash flow number. So all these numbers here are pulled through from the workings tab. And the gray numbers over here, so the discount rate and the tax on dividends, that is inputs based on individual circumstances. So for me personally, I need a return of 10%. And the reason for it being 10% is because I do expect a higher return when I pick individual stocks compared to buying the general market. In terms of the tax on dividend, that is my personal income tax rate. I get taxed at 33%. But if you get taxed at a lower rate, then feel free to change that number over there. So the next thing you need to do now is to update the growth rates based on how quickly you think the company can grow its free cash flow. And I basically have three scenarios here, the worst case scenario, the normal case, and the best case scenario. So the worst case scenario, I think this company will go th grow 3% for the next five years, 2% for years six to year 10. And for the normal case, I do expect a higher growth rate than the worst case for these two periods. So 5% for year zero to year five and 3% for years six to years 10. And for the best case, again, higher rates than the normal case, 8% and 5% respectively. In terms of building an expectation of the growth rate of a company going forward, the way that I do it is that I look at its historical growth rate and see what it's done over the past 10 years. So a good way to find information quickly is to go on Quick FS. So over here on Quick FS, you can see I've got Hallenstein's numbers. And you can see that over the past 10 years, revenue has not grown significantly. So in 2011, it was 205. And you can see the revenue growth is kind of lumpy. So it's not growing at a clear trend. You know, some years there'll be negative growth. and some years, there'll be close to no growth at all. And some years, there'll be really good growth. So basically what I do is I look at what the company has done in the past and to me this looks like a company that can grow at a really slow rate over time because you know growing from 205 million to 288 million in 10 years does signal that this company isn't growing very much. So then I'll use what the company has done in the past to build into my expectations going forward. So the next number that we have here is the exit dividend yield. So basically this is the dividend yield that the company will have at the time when we sell the company after 10 years. So in other words, the higher the dividend yield when we sell it basically means that the company is trading at a cheaper level because obviously if you're getting more dividends for what you pay for the company, you'll get a higher dividend yield, meaning that the company is cheap. But if it's a good quality business, then we might expect a lower dividend yield when we sell out that company. So in the worst case scenario, I have assigned it a 10% dividend yield on exit. For the normal case scenario, I've assigned it 7%, which is currently where 
the dividend yield for Helen Science is currently at. And for the best case scenario, I've assigned it 5%. Basically saying this is a really hot dividend stock and everyone wants to buy it. So it's driven the dividend yield down. And the calculator will spit out the numbers here, intrinsic value for worst case, normal case, and the best case scenario. So if I change this number over here to 0%, you can see that the intrinsic value drops from around $5 to $4. And if I drop it again, you can see it drop further more. The last step is to assign probabilities to each of these cases over here. So for the worst case, I've assigned a 25% probability and for the normal case, 50% probability. And the best case scenario, I've assigned it 25%. Based on the probabilities of each of these scenarios, I get a weighted fair value or intrinsic value of $7.80 for Hallensteins. And based on what the company is trading at at the moment of $7.38, the company does look like it's trading close to its fair value. Now I've assigned a margin of safety of 30% here, meaning that I would only buy the shares at $5.46. And what that means is that the difference between the current share price and $5.46 is negative 26%. So that represents a downside of 26% if I am buying with a 30% margin of safety. Now you can change this number to 0% and it looks like the company is trading close to fair value or an upside of 6%. So you can change this number around and obviously the, the redder it is, the more negative it is. So if I put a 50% margin of safety, it's very red over there. So personally, I would like to buy this stock at a 30% margin of safety. So at the moment, the share price is a bit too high for my liking. So that is the free cash flow model. Now, if we look at the simplified calculator, basically there's no free cash flow to worry about. All you need to do is enter in the current dividends per share. And I've assigned the same exact same growth rates for each of these worst case, normal case and best case, as well as the exact same probabilities to each of those cases. And I get a weighted average intrinsic value of roughly $7.53. So that is actually quite close to the $7.80 that I got from the free cash flow calculator. And that is a good check if you have the time to use both calculators. If you get two different answers, then what that means is that your, your workings on either one or both of them are not quite there yet. All right, so we want an answer that is quite close to one another to show us that the calculator is working. So this is the simplified model. There's less inputs involved. All you need to do is enter the dividends per share and you get your answer over there. Now the next two tabs here are basically the outputs, the calculations that the calculator is calculating. And uh, if you want more detail, you can look into each of these cases as it does show all the assumptions projected out for the next 10 years. So I have calculations tabs for both free cash flow as well as simplified, if that is something you'd like to look at. But for most people, all you need to do is just enter in the growth rates, the exit terminal multiple, as well as the probability assigned to each of the worst case, normal case and best case, and it'll spit out a fair value or an intrinsic value of the business. Now I do have to caution you that this calculator is only useful for calculating the intrinsic value of dividend paying stocks. So if a company isn't paying out any dividends, then you can't really use this calculator. Or if a company doesn't pay out a significant chunk of their earnings or their free cash flow in dividends, then this calculator won't be as useful. So personally, I would only use this calculator if a company pays out a significant proportion of their earnings or their free cash flow around the 60% mark. So if the payout ratio is more than 60%, then I would use this calculator. If not, I'd rather use a different calculator based on free cash flow. So I can make a calculator for free cash flow models as well. If that is something that you'd like, just leave a comment down below and let me know as well if you found any undervalued dividend stocks let me know, leave a comment down below and I could run my calculator through them. And if you found any bugs with my calculator, let me know as well so I can make edits and make future versions of this calculator. But hopefully this calculator gives you a good rough idea on calculating the value of a company's intrinsic value so that you, know, you don't have to do all the hard yards yourself. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. But until next time guys, take care.